<laughs> no turning back. <laughs> All right. Sounds about right. <laughs> Bless me, Lord's house tonight. Let's all stand on our feet. Let's grab our song books. Let's see number 137. Hey, 137 this evening. Take the name of Jesus with you. Sing it out, church, nice and loud on the first. Take the name of Jesus with you, child of sorrow and of woe. It will joy and comfort give you. Take it. Church hymn 117, hymn number 117, I'm living by faith. Sing the church like you mean it nice and loud. I care not today what tomorrow may bring, if shadow or sunshine or rain. The Lord I know ruleth for everything, and all of my worries may.
to see everyone tonight we um, we've said from the beginning several weeks ago we didn't want this to just be another meeting Amen. we said that we wanted to meet with God we wanted his presence to be real and we wanted it to be something different yeah, we're not uh, not putting on a show it's not entertainment this is for the honor and glory of the Lord that he would do the work he wants to do sure. that he wants to do and um, too much of today we're looking to be entertained. What we need to be is brought under conviction. Amen. We need to be brought to the foot of the cross. And we need to be brought to, brought, brought to a place of repentance. We need God. Amen. We need God. And we've been praying. And so I'm going to invite, uh, as I've been doing every night, the men. Any men that would, would want to, would desire to, is able to come down to the altar. We will pray together. We're praying for revival. We're praying for awakening. We're praying for a moving of the Holy Spirit. And so I would ask you to come. I'd ask you to come. Brother Gary, would you pray for us? Just pray for revival. Pray for us. Father in heaven, Lord, we come with a humble heart. Uh, your word reminds us you are very near to the broken and contrite heart. Lord, we pray that you would continue to just uh, just prepare us, Lord, to not only worship you in spirit and in truth, but to have our hearts prepared to receive the word of God, Lord. Oh, Father, thank you for uh, Central Baptist Church. Thank you for these precious families. Thank you for Pastor and his leadership. Father, thank you for the men of God that you've sent to preach, to preach to us. Pray you'd help the man of God tonight, Lord, as he opens the word and Help him to preach and just uh, handle the scripture with integrity, Lord. And our humble prayer is that, Jesus, you would be lifted up, you would be glorified, and Holy Spirit, you would have free reign to speak, to convict, to encourage, to minister, to build our faith, to grow us. Father, thank you. Thank you. Your will is good, acceptable, and perfect. And we're, we're asking, Lord, you would just give us continue to work in our hearts or we might be humble, we might be broken, we might, uh, Lord, be ready, eager to hear your voice, do your will. Lord, help us not to resist or push you away. Help help us to see our pride. Lord, whatever, whatever hindrance, obstacle might be there, Lord, help us to see this, that we might, uh, Lord, just confess, uh, repent, do, these, do what's necessary, Lord, to hear your voice. We desperately need revival. We need you, Lord. And we acknowledge it. We confess it together. Humbly, Lord, we're asking you to be glorified. And Father, once again, Lord, maybe if there's someone here that does not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, we pray tonight would be, this day would be the day of their salvation, Lord. Speak to their heart. 
Thank you for what you're going to do, Lord. We're excited. We've come in faith. We're trusting you, Lord. Your word will never return void. We're trusting you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Just want the Lord. Lord to be here. So used to being entertained and we're having a routine that we just um, I just don't think we're always looking for the presence of God, but we need his presence Amen. tonight. We need the presence of God tonight. Amen. Good to see folks. Amen, Brother Gary. It's good to see you, Brother Gary Ellison, sister. Good to see you tonight. Man Junior, good to see you tonight. Amen. Good to be here. And uh, it's Genesis, right? From McAllen. Amen. Uh, your 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 dad is Pastor Briones. So the Briones. Amen. So good to have you tonight. Amen. Thank you for being here. And the rest of y'all too. Amen. You don't sit there the whole service going, he didn't mention me. <laughs> no, it's good to see everybody else. Thank you all for being faithful. Thank you all for coming. Thank you for singing and participating. And uh, stick around a little while after the service. We've been having a good time. Amen. Just fellowshipping and, and the Lord's been good. Amen. And, um, and so, brother, next song. Let's all stand one last time. Let's see number 22. Hymn number 22, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Sing it, church, nice and loud. Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. y'all may be seated amen got to be your savior to praise him amen? amen oh that's good tonight praise the lord what a blessing and uh brother buster you go ahead and come on start getting ready amen make sure everybody can see him yeah all right and you can uh just organize the, the brother just organize the mic how you want it brother yeah, thank you Amen. We'll have Brother Buster going to sing a couple songs for us, and then Brother Terrence will be coming and preaching for us tonight. Yeah. And so far, no interrupter tonight, Brother. Amen. I can change you the spur of a moment, but uh, 
By now, it looks like you can go no straight English, eh, man? <laughs> I feel the touch of hands so kind and tender. Yeah, my hand. They're leading me to paths that I must try. I'll have no fear for Jesus walks beside me. For I'm sheltered in the arms of God. So let the storm clouds rise, the dark clouds rise. They won't worry me, for I'm sheltered safe within the arms of God. shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. Soon I shall hear the call from heaven's portals. Come home, my child, it's the last you must try I'll fall asleep but I wake in God's new haven sheltered safe within the arms of God so let the storm In the arms of God, He walks with me, and none of earth shall harm me, for I'm sheltered in the arms of God. I stand here before you, unworthy, my Lord. But you know that better than I. You bought my salvation yep. on Calvary's hill. And Lord, I'm not asking you why. I can't comprehend why a king would leave heaven yep. to die on the cross for the sake of this poor wretched man. But I just want to thank you. Amen. Yep. For taking me in yeah. and for bearing my burden, for giving my sin, for the precious communion 
of the Father and the Son. Lord, I just want to thank you for all you have done for us. Now in the midst of my darkness, you came as a light. Now I walk where it's brighter than day. In the midst of my deserts, you set my feet right. When you burn my feeble efforts to pray, Lord, I needed no friend yours to call on your name, and no money could pay for my sin. Just a beggar was I, yet you loved me the same, and you were waiting to welcome me in. Preaching time with Terrence and Terrence Calvin. Come, brother, preach what the Lord's given to you. All right. Well, I appreciate the good singing. Amen. The message of the song be thankful. Amen. The Bible says in everything, give thanks. In everything. It doesn't say when everything's done. It says in the middle of it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And that's everything. That means um, it doesn't just mean the good times. It means the bad times. It means uh, the, the confusing times and the times when you don't know what's going on. You got to give thanks. Amen. Amen. Uh, in these last day and age we live in, that's one of the sin, I believe, of uh, or not only our country, but folks in general. I mean, even the believers, you know, you kind of get to the point where you just, you're just, um, you kind of like, I guess the generation now is entitled. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're entitled. They feel like they deserve things. Yeah. And when you feel entitled, the last thing you'll do is give thanks. Yeah. Amen. Uh, young people that grow up and one of the, says I grew up in church and, and uh, robust can testify this. One of the things that we struggle with is gratefulness. Because a lot of things were given to us that it was already there. We didn't have to fight or we didn't have to earn it. We didn't have to struggle for it, work hard for it. A lot was given to us, amen? And sometimes it's easy to be uh, un ungrateful for that. Amen. amen. And uh, you got to remember, man, God, amen, is good all the time. And we always it's always right to praise Him. It's always right to give Him honor. It's always right to brag on Him, amen? Uh, you don't need any special time. People say, I'll wait till the church to do it. No, y'all do it at the house. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Do it while driving down the road. Do it wherever you're at. Whatever you're doing. Right. Man, if something works out, just go ahead and brag on the Lord. Amen. Yes. I know during that COVID, man, we do a lot of uh, side job and side work. And while we're doing that, man, uh, we'd measure something. I'd be working with a guy and I'd measure something and we'd cut it. And we'd put that board together and, man, it'd work out. 
And I go, wait a minute, well, praise the Lord. Yeah. And they kind, of, they kind of just look, okay, you know, and, they, and, they, and you know, and, man, we put something together, man, they get, get done. They said, man, we're finished. I said, yeah, praise the Lord, man, look at that, that looks real good, doesn't it? Man, thank the Lord. I'd be sitting in there all kind of like, oh, yeah, yeah. They didn't know what to say, man. And uh, I'm glad that I put the pressure on them, amen. And that's sometimes what you need to do, just tell people, praise the Lord, amen. Let them know that God is good, amen. You're grateful for it. And uh, some people, I know they, they want to steal God's glory. And they don't want to be grateful. I mean, I want to always be grateful and thank God for everything he's done, amen. I don't want to ever get over salvation. I don't want to ever get over all the good things he's blessed us with, Amen. Mark chapter number 14, or 15, I'm sorry, Mark chapter 15, go there in your Bible tonight, and we're going to preach out of there a little bit here tonight, <clears throat> we'll re preach here, read some verses, and get to the message here, <clears throat> I'm thankful to be back with you all tonight again, I mean, I've been enjoying uh, just being here down in the valley, amen, amen. Uh, this is one of those times being in the valley has been enjoyable, amen, <laughs> amen. amen. People, when they say I'm in the valley, you know, it's usually not a good thing. But, man, being down in the valley with y'all down here, it's been good. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I've been also been joining your preacher and fellowship. And uh, we've been praying for uh, Miss Teresa and asking amen. God to help her. Amen. Right. Sis, if you're seeing that, we're praying for you. Amen. Amen. And uh, I'm glad the stone got rolled away. Amen. Thank the Lord. Amen. <laughs> She's the only one to have a revival this week. Amen. She's the only one that did what the preacher preached on Sunday night. Yep. Had the stone rolled away. Amen. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else, you still got it, amen. <laughs> oh, nonetheless, amen. Good to be here. And I so I've been joining preach uh being with Brother Buster and his son, Brother Titus, and we've been having a good fellowship. Amen. And I've been just enjoying that and uh, we're having a good time here. So let's read in our Bible tonight, book of Mark, uh chapter number fifteen. And uh look, let's read here from verse number let's start there in verse number twenty. And then we'll read down there around about verse number 32, I think it is. That's where we're going to go, yeah. Mark chapter uh, 15, verse 20. And when they had mocked him, they took off the purple robe from him and put, on his own, put his own clothes on him and led him out to crucify him. And they compel one Simon, a Cyrenian, who passed by coming out of the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to bear his cross. And they bring him unto the place, Golgotha which is being interpreted the place of a skull. And they gave him to drink wine mingled with myrrh, but he received it not. And when they had crucified him, they parted his garments, casting lots upon them, whatever man should take. And it was the third hour and they crucified him. And the superscription of his accusation was written over the king of the Jews. And with them, they crucified two thieves, the one on his right hand and the other on his left. And the scripture was fulfilled, which saith, and he was numbered with the transgressors. And they that passed by railed on him, wagging their heads and saying, Ah, thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself and come down from the cross. Likewise also the chief priests mocking said uh, among themselves with the scribes, He saved others, himself he cannot save. Let Christ the King of Israel descend now from the cross that we may see and believe. And they that were crucified with him reviled him. Amen. Let's go, Lord, in prayer and ask him his blessing. Lord, one, one more time, we're coming asking for your help to be able to preach the message here. I pray your word would have, Lord, a good effect tonight and a free course and it not return void, Lord God. And I pray it be a hammer, uh, Lord, to be a hammer and a fire and it be like seed tonight, dear God. And I pray your precious Holy Spirit would fill me uh, Lord God, to, Lord, to be able to preach in the way you want the message preached. Uh, first, to honor and glorify you and to make your words known, but also, Lord God, to minister to your people and that they might hear from you tonight, Lord God. I'm just a vessel. Fill me up and pour me out tonight, Lord. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, and I pray that, uh, Lord, the blood of Jesus would just cover us tonight. You'd shut us in from every care, worry, and distraction of this world. And for a little while, may we enjoy you and, Lord God, may we just uh, be encouraged, Lord God, and may you, uh, Lord, send this church what they've been praying for, uh, meet the pastor's uh, expectations for the meeting, uh, bless him and his wife and her health tonight, Lord, and just have your hand upon them, Lord. Be with all these folks here tonight, Lord, and I pray if there's anyone lost, they may, Lord, realize their need of the Lord Jesus tonight. Have your way, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. All right, here, let's go. Uh, 
This passage here, uh, before I begin here, you know, I was born and raised in church, and uh, being born and raised in church, you know, you kind of think funny things when you're a kid, you know, growing up in church. Yeah. Uh, my dad got saved in 1983. He was the first one of our family on the Navajo Reservation to get saved and be born again. And I'm so glad that he did get saved, amen. I'm glad that he got saved, got in church, and got faithful. And by the way, tonight, uh, he's still plugging away, amen. Uh, 67 years old, man, uh, started, uh, uh, I think, the night church out there in the reservation about, two, uh, about a year and a half ago, right in the middle of COVID. Uh, started another church reservation, got a new building built out there, uh, 80 by 42, amen. And not only that, but then, man, this he sent me today, he said they're going to be baptized on seven Sunday. Amen. Man, what a blessing, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. So, have you ever hear, well, you know, everything just everywhere going bad? Well, not everywhere, amen. I'm thankful that, uh, man, God's still doing the work, amen. And I'm glad he took us to church, and I'm glad that he kept us faithful, and I'm glad that, man, he kept us in there as much as he could. And, and I remember growing up in church just listening to preachers, and, and they preach. And, and, you know, when you're a kid, you know, uh, you listen to preaching, and you always, you Children have a different way of looking at things. They have a unique mind and uh, a, a, a look at stuff. And, and I remember coming across these passages in, in either Sunday school or actually in preaching. And that part there, and you know, we've been taught the, the stories and the parables of Jesus. We've been taught about the miracles and all the things, how he helped people and, and had compassion and fed the 5,000 and, and how all the great things that Jesus did, man, the healing the blind and all, just man, all the great stories about Jesus. And this story as a child, when I read it, it always kind of come to me and I thought, man, because I really didn't understand it. And, and uh, I'm going to tell you what I mean. In this passage here, there in verse number tw uh, 29, uh, they mocked him, the Bible says there. In verse number 30, they said, come down from the cross. Verse 31, it says there, they said, uh, he said, he saved others. He cannot save himself. 32 said, man, if he comes down from the cross, we'll, we'll believe him. As a child, you know what I thought? Yeah, Lord, why don't you come down? Lord, you, you fed the 5,000. Lord, you, you, you healed those that were sick. Lord, the, the lame walk because of you. Lord, all the good things that you did and the powerful things you did, the, the miracles, Lord God, how come you couldn't come down? They said they would believe you, Lord. You know, and, and as a child, you, I, that, that was my mindset. How come, Lord? Because, I mean, that's the last thing I would want to happen to Jesus as a child. I don't want him, at him to be beaten. I didn't want him to be whipped. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah, right. I didn't want him to be uh, uh, abused. And I didn't want him to, man, to suffer all that he suffered there. I didn't want that. Because this is the man, Jesus, that we're, we're, we're talking about. Our Sunday school lessons and all how he man, held the children on his lap. And how he told them, suffer the little children. I mean, to us as kids, we're like... No, Lord, yeah, you should have come. How come you didn't? As I grew up and now, later on in my life, I realized it was not a matter of if. Amen? Yes. It wasn't a matter if he could come down. It wasn't a matter if, uh, it, it wasn't a matter of, uh, is he able to? Right. No, the, the question was, uh, it was a matter of his own will. That he wouldn't, amen, he yeah. stayed there. And that battle was won there in the previous chapters there at Gethsemane. When he prayed and said to the Lord, not my will, but thy will be done. He prayed and went to those with the, 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 the garden with them disciples and said to them, he said, tarry ye here while I go and pray yonder. And Jesus went and prayed. The Bible says he went a little further. And I like that. Always going a little further. Amen. And he went a little further, and Bible says he prayed over there, and he said, Lord, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me, this cup of suffering, this cup of, uh, uh, of death, this cup, man, that I have to endure and drink of, the wrath of God here, let it pass from me, but not my will, thy will be done. Amen. I mean, the Lord submitted to this uh, uh, beating, this, this, this whipping and this abuse and all of this. And he, he submitted to Calvary. He submitted to all that, 
awfulness there. It's not a matter of if he could come down. It was a matter of will he. But I thank God he did stay up there. Amen. He did not come down. He could have, but he did not. I'm so glad he did not come down. Because, well, for a little while here, think of this. If he did come down, he would have been disobedient. Bible says the father had given him that cup. And he said, man, it's Lord, you've given it to me. I must drink of it. I, I got to go do this. This is the plan of God from bed before. I mean, the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. I mean, this is already set in action. If he'd have come down, he'd have been disobedient. Yes. And if he'd have been disobedient, you know what would have happened? We would not have a perfect Savior. Amen. But I'm glad we got a perfect Savior. Amen. He stayed up there on Calvary. It's not that he couldn't come down. It's not that he was defeated. You know, I like there in John chapter 10, he says, but he says there, I am come that they might have life. He said, I, no man take my life from me. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it up again. When you read there in the gospels of how he's crucified, you read that those times where it says he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. You know what that tells me? He was doing something that was contrary to being crucified. Everybody that hung being crucified, they, they were suffering and they were hanging because all the pain and all the agony was there in their hands. Their weight was in their hand and their feet and they're trying to hold themselves up. It was not normal for someone to hold their head up. But the Lord Jesus held his head up. He looked at the people. He could see them. They could see him. And finally, death could not come. He, he said he bowed his head and died. And Jesus controlled the whole time. Man, what a great Savior we have. Amen. He's a perfect Savior. I mean, you look at all the so-called religious leaders of this world. Not a one of them is perfect like our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Every one of them, there's something wrong with them. Man, you read of them, all the sins that these religious leaders that people tend to overlook. Yes. They tend to overlook their fornicating. They tend to overlook their murders. They tend to overlook all the evil that they have done in this world. Right. But thank God, after 2,000 years, the historians, the archaeologists, they, they've been studying, they've been trying to look at Jesus. They have to come like Pilate and say this. I find no fault in this man. Hallelujah. I'm glad we got a perfect Savior. You got a perfect Savior. We got someone then there's no fault found in him tonight. Amen. Man, you know, if he'd have come down, he wouldn't be perfect. Man, I'm glad I got a perfect Savior. Hey, man, I mean, all these religious leaders that have ever lived, they came from a mama. They were born in sin. They died in sin. Hey, man, but I'll tell you what, Jesus Christ, virgin born, hallelujah. Hey, man, they had the blood of God in him. Man, this Jesus here is our perfect Savior. Man, we sing that song, our great Savior. Hallelujah. Hey, man, we might brag on him now. Hey, man. Amen. There's no one in the same category as Jesus. There's no one that you could say, well, these religious leaders that will put Jesus in that category. No. You know why? Because they crucified him, but up from the grave he arose. Amen. Amen. The rest of them all still dead and buried. They got their sepulchers. They got their mausoleums. They got their bones. They got their coffins. Glory to God, we have an empty tomb. Oh, Amen. Amen. Right. I'm just getting beside myself here a little bit. Amen. Amen. You can join me if you want. Amen. We'll brag on the Lord. Amen. Sure. If he'd have come down, then we wouldn't have a perfect Savior. If he'd have come down, the scriptures, the prophecy of the scriptures would not be fulfilled. That's right. The verse says there, man, it, it happened to him. The Bible says in verse number 20, the scripture was fulfilled. Everything that happened to him because of the scriptures that were fulfilled. Yes. Man, I'll tell you what, man, I thank God for this here. If he'd have come down, we wouldn't have the prophecy of the Bible that's, man, perfect. Right. Right. They asked a man, uh, they said, do you guys have a perfect Bible? I said, oh, yeah. I got it right here. I'll give it to you. It's a King James Bible, amen. Yes. It ain't the new King James. No. It ain't the 21st King James, no. amen. It ain't the, the, the now, uh, the, 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 all these other King James, they come. No, this is the King James old Bible, amen. I'm yes. glad for it tonight, amen. Yes. I'm glad I got a perfect Bible. 
Man, I'm glad I got a Bible, man, that's got no errors. I'm glad I got a Bible here, man, that man is innocent to proven guilty. And they've been trying and trying and trying. They still can't. They, they got to make up stuff. Right. I believe the Bible is God's word, first of all, by faith. I'm a believer in the Bible. Amen. I'm a Bible believer. Amen. I believe it by faith. God gave us a perfect book. Number two, I believe because of the facts of history. The facts of history showing the two lines of manuscripts and where they came from. The facts of history show us we got a perfect Bible. Knowing the facts of history, but the fruit that this Bible has produced. Right. Amen. No other Bible out there has produced the kind of fruit that this King James Bible has. Amen. Duh, man, you know what else? The foundation that is laid in our English language. Right. People talk Bible whether they know it or not. Right. Yeah. People say, well, that phrase right there, money talks. Where'd that come from? Ecclesiastes? Yeah. A little bird of the air told me. Ecclesiastes? Amen. Right on. Proverbs 4. Yeah. I mean, they're all in there. You say, man, where'd they go? It set the foundation for our language. It wasn't Shakespeare. No, no one taught Shakespeare. Right. You know what people taught? They talk a King James Bible. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's a foundation of the English language. It's what is standardized our English language. Yeah. Amen. Down south, man, it's I reckon. Paul said, for I reckon the suffer this present time. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. You read that phrase, you all, you all. Yes. Man, they got short of y'all. <laughs> all y'all. <laughs> it's in there, man. He, he said, oh, I can't believe that. Well, somebody just got real dignified and got real sharp and put on a suit and there. Well, I ain't going to say that, but Bible still says it. Sure. You all. Yes, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm glad if he'd have come down, there'd been no prophecy of Scripture fulfilled. But man, he, man, he stayed on there to fulfill this Bible. We've got a perfect Bible. You can bet your life on the Bible. Amen. Matter of fact, you can bet your soul on the Bible. Yes, I mean, my soul is dependent on this Bible right here. Amen. I'm glad my, my life hangs upon this Bible. I was born again, not a corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the Word of God, which yes. liveth and abideth forever. Amen. Well, man, if he'd have come down, there'd been no perfect Savior. There'd have been no prophecies of scriptures fulfilled. Man, if he'd have come down, there'd been no plan for the redemption of man. Man just messed up in the garden. God created Adam and Eve in innocence. They were an innocent there in the garden. He gave them just a simple instruction. He said, first, of every tree of the nod, of every tree in the midst of the garden, thou mayest freely eat. That was positive. Everybody thinks God's negative. No, the first thing he told them was, every tree you may eat. Right, really. But, he said, there, the tree that's in the midst of the garden, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest there, thou shalt surely die. You're right, brother. I left out that word freely. Amen. They, uh, he told them to eat freely of that part right there. I messed that up. That one God's fault, my fault. <laughs> I just caught up with that, amen. <laughs> of every tree in the garden, thou mayest freely eat. Positive, then the negative, the one in the middle, don't eat that one. Why is everybody hangs around the one thing God says you can't have? Yeah, yeah. I mean, who knows how many trees he said to eat? There probably was a thousand at least. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, think about it, man. The valley here. You got a bunch of uh, fields and orchards. Yep. What if God said, hey, eat any from any farm, any field, any orchard, you want in the valley man from brownville all the way up that way to laredo anything you want just don't eat that tree over there in the middle of mission <laughs> but everything else you can have why is it man goes to the one thing god said you can't have it's like your kid you say hey don't bother that you know where he's at he's right there yeah. Hey man, all you mom and dad right here, when you're raising your children, you said, son, leave that alone. Where did he go? Went right to it. I said, don't, I'm not touching it. I'm just looking at it. <laughs> I mean, you got a whole home to roam around. You got a whole room full of toys. But you're around the, man, the mom's antiques that about to break. Hey man, get away from there. That's the way some of you is. Your dogs, hey baby. Yep. Lord says, leave that alone. Yeah. Why, Lord? I thought I could do whatever I want. I'm American. I got a right to it. No, you don't. 
Right. Some of that stuff, leave alone. Yes, man. Amen. Amen. Some of those sites don't visit on the internet. Yeah, right. Absolutely. Amen. Don't download those apps. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Oh God, I can do whatever I want. Just don't do it. Right. Just leave it alone. When man sinned in the garden there, all of humankind was doomed. Wherefore, by one man sinner in the world, that pass upon all men, for that all have sinned. Right. You say, man, that ain't fair. One man did that, now we're all guilty because of Adam? Yeah. yeah. But you know what's better? Whereby one man's disobedience, they meant many were made sinners, even so by one man's yes. obedience. Yes. Man, one man, Jesus, he's the one man that had that plan to bring it all back. One man made us all guilty. Adam and Eve, they made us all guilty. But one man, Jesus Christ, man said, hey, I'll bring them, I'll redeem them all back to you, Lord. Man, hallelujah. If he'd have come down, there'd been no plan to redeem man. If he'd have come down, there'd been no purpose for the earth and creation. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8, they're all a creation groaning together. Creation's groaning. Yes, sir. You know why Jesus wore the crown of thorns? You go back and study where the first time thorn showed up. Sin in the garden. He said, cursed is the ground for your sake. Thorn shall it bring forth. That cursed man on the earth brought thorns. Yes, Jesus, when he died, just not for the sins of my, the mankind, the man for the earth. Yep. Amen. There ain't no better earth lover than God. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Amen. All oh, people always say, oh man, God don't really care about the environment. Would you be willing enough to die for it? He did. Wore the crown of thorns on his head. Amen. You take that how you see fit. Amen. Some of you are like, eh, what is that? No, I mean, really. Yeah. Died so that he might have redeemed. Going to make a new heaven, a new earth. Yes, yeah. Amen. All taken care of because he didn't come down. Amen. Right. Amen. Man, if he didn't come down, if he came down, there'd be no power and victory over the devil, over sin, over hell and the grave. That's right. If he'd have come down. But man, since he didn't, man, we sure got, man, victory over, man, yeah. devil. We got victory over sin. We ever got hell in the grave. Yes. I like how he speaks to John, Revelation, chapter number one. He said, I am he that was dead, yes. but am alive forevermore. And he says, amen. Yeah. amen. Those you can't say amen, the Lord Jesus says amen. Yeah. amen. <laughs> he said, amen. I, he said, I have the keys of death and hell. Amen. I mean, man, the devil ain't got keys to his own place. Amen. I mean, the Lord's got it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, well, I, the grave, man, is not going to hold us. Right. Some of you got loved ones you buried, man. You put them in there and you grieve and you sorrow. But the Bible says that you sorrow not even as those which have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again. Even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with them. Amen. Man, I'm looking forward to that. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. With the voice of the archangel, the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Right. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Man, what a blessing. Yes. All that, why? Because he didn't come down. Hallelujah. Right. Man, if he'd have come down, there'd been no payment for our sin. Yep. We'd all owe a huge bill and debt to God. Man, he took care of that, paid for all of our sin. Man, what a blessing. He didn't come down. He didn't come down, man. And because he didn't come down, there be if he did come down, there would be no place in heaven for you and I. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If we're not so, I told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Amen. He's, I got a place for you. Why? Because he didn't come down. Amen. And I'm looking forward to that. Yes. And I mean, I bet this Bible says, man, the way it is, the length, the breadth, the height, man, I mean, somebody said it's about 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles that way, 1,500 miles that way. I think, my goodness. Right. Wow. Yeah. 
That's hard to comprehend. I mean, you're like, man, that is huge. Yeah, hallelujah. Amen. Man, I'm in mansions. In my father's house are many mansions. Man, man, that streets of gold. Amen. At 12 foundations. Man, I, I, I don't know about you, but man, that's something to look forward to. Man, the lambs, the light thereof, there's no need of the sun. Man, that's something to look forward to. Yes. Yes. Looking forward to heaven. Man, this world's not my home. I'm just a passing through. Why? Because he didn't come down. Amen. Amen. He didn't come down. So here's the message. So neither should you. You don't come down. Amen. He didn't come down. He went all the way. Yielded his will. Yielded to the suffering. Yielded to it all. To pay the price. Came out on the other side victorious. You and I, we don't need to come down. I got passages here. I'm going to read them to you. In 2 Kings chapter number 1. I got three main points. Amen. We'll be done here. That, oh, you said, oh, that was the message. Well, no, that was kind of builds you up to this right here. Amen. <laughs> 2 Kings chapter 1, the Bible says there in verse number 9. The king sent them a captain of 50 with his 50. The, the king uh, set, uh, sent some soldiers after Elijah because Elijah brought this man a message. The king, a message of you ain't going to live because you're seeking the gods of uh, the gods of the other nations, man. You're seeking, man, these uh, gods of Ekron, Baal's above there in verse 2. And then verse, there, the verse number 9 says, And he went up to him, and behold, he sat on the top of a hill, man of God. And he spake on him, Thou man of God? The king has said, come down. Elijah said, I ain't going to come down. I ain't going to come down, number one. Don't come down from the word that God has given you. Don't come down from the word God has given you. You know what? We, I've been seeing, we just traveled the country. We're going coast to coast, man. Seattle, up there in uh, Washington State. Back to the east again, back and forth, down here. It's like a big zigzag, man. It's like, up there, Seattle, man, New York, down here to the bottom tip. I mean, as far as you can, get apart and seeing things. You know what we're seeing? People coming down from the Word of God. Yeah. Toning it down. Yeah. The king's desire here was, man, that those, those, cat, those, uh, those captain soldiers said, hey, don't, don't be saying that to the king. What you're preaching is so negative. What you're preaching, man, it's just not, it's just, it's, we don't need to hear that. You know, we're getting to that point now in this day and age where people don't want to hear the truth of God's word. Yeah. We, we're there where the Bible says there, man, the last days. The yep. Bible says they'll heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. That's right. They'd rather hear something taught, man, and, and nothing wrong with teaching. You need it, but they're more interested in that little soft, milk toast, sweet, let's have a little Bible study lesson type of a setup, and then someone just preaching the fire. Yeah. Well, that's just that's just so uncouth. That's just so rough. That's just so. That's just uh, I don't like that. And I think some had to do with that demand the attacking of masculinity in our society. They don't like authority. They don't like masculinity. It bugs them. Man, I tell you what, man, they sure like man when something's real soft and sweet. And, and nothing wrong with being articulate, like our brother here. Nothing wrong. But I mean, I tell you what, there's some boys out there. They're just they want they want her to fly. Yeah. You're like, come on, man, say it. Wow. It's like, man, well, then they, or they'll get up and preach and then they'll kind of apologize about half of what they said. <laughs> and you're like, well, I really hate to say this to you, but uh, I'm sorry, I don't really mean that. And you're like, hush, just preach, man. Yeah. <laughs> get with it. <laughs> I mean, don't apologize for what you're standing for. Preach right. against sin, man. Yes. If the God calls it sin, that Bible. Preach it, preach it. Amen. Yeah. Cry aloud. Spare not. Right. The Bible still says that. Sure. But nowadays, it's like, oh, don't say that. Man. You need to match up with these people over here. Mm. Preach against false doctrine. Amen. I was telling my brother about this, man. They're, they're, they're meeting up golden. They come over. I'm like, can you not mention preaching against Calvinism? Mm. I'm like, why are you asking me that? There's a whole bunch of other preachers you could say. Why are you gonna tell me that? <laughs> hey Amen. I said I got a good Calvinist joke for you, but it's not for everybody. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> man, I'll tell you what, man, they, they're, they're embracing that. Yep. Embracing all sorts of false doctrines. That's right. Last I checked, there was still seven year tribulation, not yep. a three and a half. Yep. Yeah. Not doing the first three and a half, and then we'll see how it works out, and then you know what? Then we'll go up and then, no, 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 no. I mean, that's been the prophetic doctrine, man, for like the last, man, about 100 years. But then all of a sudden, I got a new doctrine. That's right. I got some people that need to follow me now. So you know what? I'm going to start a new following. Therefore, I'm going to start a new cult with three and a half years now. Yeah. Not good night, man. What was wrong with just hanging on to the same stuff we believe? Yeah. yeah. Amen. Yeah. Get everybody to follow your brain. No, man, that ain't the way it is, man. Don't come down from the word God has given us. Amen. Some of these old time prophecies, man, they've been there for a long time. Amen. Greater men, better than us that studied more of that, man, they, they, man, they help establish it. Now. And the men that come after, man, they've really not added anything to it. And they're just kind of the same in the same vein. They're coming to the same conclusions. It's neat how the spirit of God works and bears witness to type like that. Amen. I mean, there's people out there that, man, they, they go and they ask questions. What do you think? And then people give them the Bible answer. And you know, if you're studying the Bible, so you give people a Bible answer, you're not going to give any wild answer to anybody else. Yeah. Everybody's going to get the same answer. Everybody's going to give you the same answer. Why? Because this is what the Bible says. Yeah, right, right, right. Don't come down from the word that God has given us. Don't change it. Amen. Amen. Don't mess with all these doctrines that we believe. Amen. Yeah. Well, I want something deep and dark that's my own that makes me special. Why? Why don't you just champion the old banner, the old flag, and carry that? Hey, man. Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. No. Man, hey, man, I, I, man, I thank God for all the men of God that trained us, man. That, man, they stood for something. Yep, yep. Man, they, they prayed over us, invested in us. Man. And I ain't going to go against what they said. A lot of that, man, they preached and taught me, and I'm going to stick with it. Hey, Amen. Been saved, man, for like since 1983. That's coming on 40 years now. Praise the Lord. Amen. Growing up here, trained in the Bible, man. If I got it wrong now, then I'm probably going to be wrong until Jesus comes. <laughs> <laughs> I've done read too much, studied a lot of these doctrines. Well, my goodness. I mean, I'm not saying I won't change, but I'm just saying, man. Some of these, I just, I'm kind of rebellious like that, though. Some things people say, you got to do this. And I'm like, eh. Hey Amen. I don't want to change that stuff. I want to stick with what God has. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Don't come down from that word. No, yeah, don't come down from the word. But look here, Nehemiah chapter number six. Our brother was there close to it. Last night I thought he was going to hit on it. I think, no, no, Lord, steer him away. Steer him away. <laughs> I, got, I got something I got, to, I got to give out of there. Amen. <laughs> steer him away from where I was going. Amen. Since the Lord didn't come down, number one, you don't come down from the word that God has given you. Number two, number two, don't come down. Over here, Nehemiah chapter number six. The Bible says, verse one, it came to pass in Sambala, Dubai, and Gishon, Arabia. Notice there's three. Amen. And that Sambala, Dubai, and Gishon, Arabia, and the rest of our enemies heard that they would build the wall. There was no breach left therein. Though at that time I had not set up the doors upon the gates. That Sambala and Gishon said unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some of the villages in the plain of Ono. Now that's one of those red flag type of things. Yep. Come meet us where you want, Ono. Yeah. Mm, that's kind of like a red flag right there. The, the location don't sound so good. Oh no. You want to meet where? Oh no. Well, I don't know. But they thought to do me mischief. I sent message to them saying, I am doing a great work so that I cannot come down. Man. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Number two, since he didn't come down, you don't come down from the work that God has given you. God has given you a work in this valley here in Harlingen. Don't come down from the work. Man. God is giving you a work here, man, to reach people, reach the lost. The brother's telling us, man, of people that have come after many days. And what a great verse there, man. We were talking about this afternoon at lunch, you know. It says, cast thy bread upon the water, for thou shalt find it after many days. That's it. How people have come said, man, I, I remember you when you first came. I, I went to your church many years ago. They're grown. They're adults. They got kids of their own now. They remember his children riding a bus, being invited, being picked up, coming. I'm thinking, man, what a blessing. Yeah. Yeah. You know how you see that? Don't come down from the work God's given you. Yeah. Right. Amen. Don't come down, man, from this work that God has for you here. That's right. I mean, God sets you all here for, uh, for a reason. Man, there's people that are going to come here, man, man, that you can reach that others can't. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Mm -hmm. 
And as much as it's difficult for us as preachers, and don't feel sorry for us, this is not a big deal. As much as difficult it is preaching and with an interpreter, interrupter, I mean interpreter, amen, but as much as difficult, you know what? That's still a great benefit for people who can't. Yep. Yep. See, I grew up in the reservation. The reservation, they speak English and Navajo. Even though they understand English, you know what? They like to hear it in Navajo. That's right. They prefer it. Although they understand you, what you're saying. And when they hear it in, in their language, you know what? You know, one thing it does, the older Navajos, first off, the older Navajo, when they hear someone trying to speak their language, they appreciate you made the effort. Yep. There's folks that are coming here. You know what they're doing? They appreciate the effort you're making. Amen. So, oh, preacher, why are we going to do that? Because they, there's people out there walking doors. So, man, I know they're do. They'll try to get to us, the message. Yep. Don't come down from the work God's got you doing. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Some of you might look at that and say, well, you know, I just kind of think, I don't want Brother Matt to do that for them. We all understand. They understand. Why do you got to do that? Because you know why? You're reaching people. That's right. Amen. Amen. I mean, we got night where we're free here, man. We can just let her rip right here. Yeah. I think I might have too much liberty tonight. I might need Brother Matt to kind of reel me in a little bit here tonight. Amen. <laughs> but, I mean, really, I mean, you know what? There's people that come, and you know what they're saying? I appreciate you doing that. Yes. You know what they'll do? They'll send someone over here. Over there, they'll do, they'll do, uh, they'll do bilingual for you. They'll know you for that. Don't come down from your work. Yep. Amen. Amen. You got it. You're building a great work here. You're building a good wall. You're building a good thing for God here. Don't come down from it. Amen. It might be hard. It might be difficult. It might be unappreciated. But don't come down from it. There might be many that are trying to say, don't do it that way. Oh, that's why you got to do it that way. There's a new way over here. No, don't come down from it. There's still no way to improve getting the gospel out than preaching the gospel. Yes, there's other, other media involved. Yes, there's other things. But the Bible says that God has still chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Amen. He still said for the preaching of the cross to them that perish foolishness. But unto us, unto us, unto us which are saved. It's the power of God. There's something in that old-fashioned preaching, man. It might just be plain. And that preacher might look wild like a wild man up there. But man, it does something for me. It helps me. We need that. Don't come down from the work God's given you here. Your teacher meetings. Amen. Right. Your Sunday school efforts. You're going out picking up kids. Sister, it may take you forever on Sunday afternoon out there and you feel like, man, I'm missing out on lunch and my free time here. I'm missing out, man. I could be doing something else right now. Don't come down from your work. Because, man, who knows? The Lord don't come. Another 10 years. Them kids, man, they'll be grown to adults. They'll go off to somewhere else. But you know what they're remember? Some old some lady came by and picked me up, brought me to church. Amen. They're gonna appreciate that. Yep. When men, when, it, when their lives falling apart out there, you know where they're gonna go? Over there, they cared for me. They brought me to a place there. Sure. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Yep. They're gonna remember some of you. You taught them in the Bible, Bible class. You, they, you taught them in the Sunday school hour. Don't come down from the work God's given you. Amen. They're going to remember, man, the time you knocked on their door and, man, you hung a door hanger on their wall. Man, you visited them. You brought them a turkey. Amen. Yeah. Cake. Amen. They're going to remember your efforts. Sure. Don't come down from the word God has sent you to preach. Don't come down from the work God's given you to do. And last of all, look at Daniel chapter number three. Daniel chapter number three there. The Bible says about Nebuchadnezzar. Says there by him, verse 5, that at what time you hear the sound of cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, dulcimer, all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the golden image. Amen. I like what it says here, that man over here, Shadrach, Meshach, is it true that you worship not my gods? See how we, I went falling down to worship your gods. We ain't coming down from our worship. Since he didn't come down, I ain't coming down from my worship. That's good, brother. I'm gonna keep worshiping the Lord. Yes. Amen. I ain't gonna man. I ain't gonna join your contemporary Nebuchadnezzar movement. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 
Nebuchadnezzar and his contemporary Christian music and all that stuff he's got playing over there. We ain't going to bow down to that. Sure. Uh, Amen. We ain't going to do them. We ain't going to do them charismatic type stuff where they hold. Oh. Oh, you ever yeah. seen that? It's it's this way. They do their hands that way. Yeah. You know why? Give me. Yep. yep. When we raise our hands, well, hallelujah, man, Lord. We're giving him something. Him something. <laughs> it's different. Yeah. Sure. Amen. Yep. That's why when you see, look at it, how come they're doing it differently? Give me something, give me something. No, man, worship is giving him something. Right. Right. I'm praising him, bragging on him. Yeah. I ain't gonna come down from old fashioned worship. Amen. Mm. Now, I ain't as old fashioned as the morning people, man. I, I mean, I'll shout, drop the hat. I'll run, amen. I get into it, amen. The spirit gets moving enough, amen. I'll run, amen. I'll stand up, man, hoot and holler, amen. I like that, amen. Yeah. I mean, I, I enjoy it, man. When, man, sometimes the meeting gets real good and it gets thick in there and you can shout, man. But then also, I like it when the presence of God gets in there and it gets thick and real and it gets quiet. That holy hush comes over the crowd. Right. That's where you kind of just sit there and like, Man, you don't want to look around, because man, you don't want to mess up what's going on. Yeah. Amen. Yes, God stirring songs, man, the songs that touch the heart and challenge us, man, draw us to an altar to pray. Right. Amen. I ain't coming down in that worship. Yeah. Amen. I ain't coming down, man, letting the world know, man, we love our God. Amen. Amen. I'm man worship at the church, worship at the house. Man, just having that old-fashioned, man, just a worship service. Lord, where you and God get that Bible and you meet with Him. Amen. I've given this out a few times. I don't know if I, maybe I probably did do it here. But I tell people, man, I say, get yourself a little three-by-five index card. And on one side, you write down every, write about five things on one side of things, man, that are a burden, that are troubling, and are hard for you. Right now. And on that card, write five things, and just, man, man, this, this is really burdening me. And then go to the next one. This is what is really a struggle. This is right here, my request. I said, I, I just, I'm dealing with this, and this is my private thing. I mean, five things bothering you right now. Now, on the other side of that card, write down five things that you are thankful to God for, you yourself. Not what your family's thankful for, not what your church is thankful for, not what others are thankful for, what you as an individual are thankful for. What has God done for you that you're thankful for? Take that card, take your Bible, go read some passages, and then begin to pray. Hold that side there, man, with the side there, on that side there with all the burdens, and start praying over that first one. Lord, Here's the first thing, Lord God, and, and just pour out your heart over that. Whether it's man, it's, 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 it's grief, whether it's frustration, whether it's even maybe even a little bit of a, a little bit of shame. Just pour out your heart there. And when you're done pouring out your heart, flip it over. And on that first one, just say, Lord, all that I poured out for now. I am thankful for this, and this is why I want to pray. Nothing praise it right there. And after you're done, go back over to the other side, number two, and just pour it out there, whatever. And then go back, number two, and this is what I, and man, you get the idea. If round three or four, God ain't moving around your life, something ain't right. Because you won't go so long, man, and it it not get the best of you. You be pouring out your heart, but then you turn over and say, but, whew, but Lord, I'm thankful for this. Yeah. I know I, I'm, I'm hurt. I know I'm, I'm, I'm bugged. I'm frustrated. But this, I am genuinely thankful for this, dear God. And I don't want to ever forget it. Woo! Yeah. You had to help me. You say, well, I'm kind of ashamed. You probably won't be by yourself like that. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Well, you'll have your own snot-slinging service. Amen. Yeah. By yourself. Yeah. Time won't matter. Who's there won't matter. You'll be by yourself. You're going to enjoy God a little while. Yeah. Don't come down from old-fashioned worship. Just enjoying the Lord. Amen. Yeah.
Letting Him know what He means to you. Amen. Because you know when we get people giving testimony and thanksgiving, well, I'm thinking, and we all think, but nothing wrong with saying these things. Nothing, I'm thankful for my church, I'm thankful for the Bible. You know, I'm thankful for your observance. And, all, and nothing wrong with that. But sometimes they're so generalized that we just want to say something and, and nothing wrong with helping do that. But to progress in your giving of thanks, you need to go with some more personal things you are thankful for. That you only know. A lot of times there's some things that God does for you that only you know. No one else knows. Those kind of things. Lord, I, I was having this burden and we're guys having this trouble, but when I was praying and you helped me right here, Lord, I really needed that. Thank you. I want to thank you. Some of you now, you go home, Lord, I really need to hear that tonight. Lord, last night, Lord, I really need to hear that. And I, I'm so thankful that you sent that message because, Lord, this is what I had. Man, just go on there. Those kind of thankful things. It won't be long, man, before you're up there just in your own way of praising the Lord and just thank you, God. Amen. Don't come down from old-fashioned worship. Don't get caught up in all that contemporary trash. Yeah. And that's what a lot of it is. It's trash. Yeah. And it's for show. Glorious. Especially when they want to put it on put it on somewhere and post it somewhere. That, to me, it cheapens it. Yeah. Amen. Yes. They want to film themselves, you know. Here, look at me worshiping tonight. I'm like... Yeah. Bible says to be seen of men, they have their reward. Right. Some of them out there, the man doing their contemporary worship, jumping around pulpit and all that, doing all that demonstration as work up people. They're doing it so they can get their likes, their follows, and all of their people to yep. man to uh, get behind them and all that. That's their reward. Yep. Those thousand followers they had, that's what they wanted, so that's what your reward is. All the thumbs up you wanted, that's why you did it, and that's, that was your reward right there. Amen. Yep. Yep. Some of that old, that, that stuff ain't it, ain't no God. No. Don't come down from his worship. Amen. I ain't going to bow to the world, but I'm going to bow to God here, Almighty. Yep. And let him know I love him. He didn't come down, so you shouldn't come down. Amen. Amen. If you would stand with me. The Lord Jesus did not come down from the cross. You shouldn't come down tonight. Is there some area of your life you kind of let up? You kind of let down some area? Maybe worship. It'd help all of us, man, to get a little more worship going in our life. Some of you tonight, maybe it's just the work of God. God's giving you, you kind of just looking at, well, that's all I do at the church, and it don't seem like anybody notices. Well, there's, there's, God does, and there's some people out there, they appreciate it. You may not see it now, but the Bible says, I shall find it after many days, way down the road. Yeah. Somebody come by and say, hey, I appreciate you what you did there at the church for me. But you'll not see it, man, if you come off that work. Keep that work up that God's giving you to do. You're not doing it for anybody else. You're doing it for Him. He's worthy of it. He didn't come down. Can I say also, man, don't come down from his word. Man, that's one of the best things we got here, man, this Bible. Don't trade that Bible for nothing. Get back to it. Read it. Memorize it. Quote it. Can I tell you tonight, if you're not saved, the Lord Jesus didn't come down for you. If you've never been born again, the Lord hung on the cross for you. If you've never accepted Jesus, you're saved. This would be a good place for you. Lord in heaven, we pray tonight, Lord God, for this service. Be blessed and speak to hearts as only you can. Draw people as only you can. May they be, Lord God, desirous of you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Have your way now. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. There's folks praying. You pray, right? If you've never been born again, won't you come now? Come on. Good time to get saved here tonight. following the Bible. We've listened to all this other stuff with other people and we're not really following God. Be a good time to get back up. 
gotten caught up maybe in what this world says is worship and the carnality of it all and it's time to get back to the old-fashioned worship what about the work been falling down in the work coming down probably a good time to come talk to the Lord folks good time to come talk to the Lord tomorrow night. We'll be back together again, looking for God, looking to find Him.